a panel discussion. Rob Zombie Films, featuring Tyler Maine, Jeff Daniel Phillips, Richard Brake, and moderated by Michael Lanzler. Recorded live at Horror Realm 2024 in Pittsburgh. Could come in, Richard Tyler and Jeff. Yeah. 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 Maybe. 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 There we go. <laughs> Hello. I'll let you be the center. No, you're, so the you're the center. You're the center. <laughs> no. It's all about you, Todd. No. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for taking some time out to speak with us today. We really do appreciate it. I'll just think easy question to start off. We can go down the line. What drew you to the entertainment industry? Boy, oh. <laughs> you know, as a, a tall, skinny kid, glasses, braces, growing up in Canada, I was uh, slightly dyslexic, so I hated school with a passion. And every Saturday I would watch wrestling, Stampede Wrestling, and then I'd watch action flicks after that, and I was like, I'm gonna do that someday, and everybody like, how the hell are you gonna do it? You're tall, skinny kid, glasses and braces in Canada. Here we are. <laughs> and uh, I, went to, I went to film school, and uh, it was unusual because as a director, they didn't have you take any acting classes. And I was trying to figure out, well, how am I gonna direct somebody if I know nothing about acting? So I just started taking some acting classes outside of the school and just kind of took off from there. Um, <clears throat> a woman. I was, uh, <laughs> I was actually a girl. I was in uh, high school and um, I was just hanging out with a good buddy of mine. And this girl came out and said, we need more guys to audition for the school play. And I was like, if she's doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> so I auditioned. I got a part because there was enough guys. And then I just fell in love with the whole thing. So I didn't get the girl, but I got a career. So, <laughs> so Jeff fell in love with show business. <laughs> so Jeff, you have over 10 years experience as a production designer, art director, and prop master. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because not many people know what that entails. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's a that's a whole other panel, but uh, uh, basically, yeah, it, you even know that. Yeah, so but I, I was also an art student, so I just had a friend that like hooked me up in an art department, and he said, "Hey, you know how to do this? You know how to weld? You know how to paint? You know, uh, you know, we're hiring people." And it, I did a bunch of music videos. Um, Propaganda was the name of the company in the, in the uh, 90s. And so I just learned on the, on the job. And, and it, I mean, we did so many, like from rap to this, to David Fincher videos, whatever. And, and it, it really made you learn this on set, people's jobs, the etiquette, you know, how it, you know, the art department is just the un, unsung heroes that are there before anybody gets there. They set it up at, at the end of the day, they're the last ones to leave. And I really liked it. It was a really great camaraderie and you know, acting is like that too, if it goes well, you know. Otherwise sometimes acting these guys will both be uh, witness to this kind of thing where someone's just more of a diva in the art department, everybody has to like join in. So I did that for a while, yeah. Very cool. So if you could never do that, it's cool. <laughs> you guys worked with a lot of directors. Obviously, the tie is Rob. Uh, what type of director did you find Rob to be? Is he one that would listen to the actors, or this is just, this is what I want, give me that? Oh, yeah, I mean, every time, I, I love working with Rob, because you come to work in the morning, you go, how do you want to kill somebody today? <laughs> <laughs> Which you don't normally get, you know? And, and for our scenes, we talk about it and figure stuff out, and it, it's, he was just great to work with, you know? Um, he's just an incredibly creative person, um, so it's a real, not just a privilege, but like a real energy he gives off that infuses everyone on the set. I mean, everyone, not just the actors, everyone. I mean, it's really extraordinary, actually. 
Um, and so working with him as an actor, he, you know, it's, he always, everything is a little bit different. When I did Doomad, it was so written so well that like we didn't improvise, for example, I didn't need to, it was all so well written. And yet then with um, Foxy, you know, he was very open to Bill and I, especially just improvising, almost all of that. The whole, like when we did the um, scene of, one of my first days actually, not my first day, the scene in the motel where Bill and I and Sherry are about to escape into to Mexico. Um, uh, we, the scene where Bill says something like, hey, what are you guys up to? You know, what should we do next or something? And I, and I say, I don't know, in the script, like, I don't know, or something like that. And then we did that, and then Rob comes up and goes, okay, next time. And he doesn't want Bill to hear, he goes, next time. Tell Bill the plot of your first porn film that you're going to make. <laughs> so I think so he holds the, the ears of, the, of those child. Oh, is it true? Yeah, exactly. I used to fucking swear a lot. And then, uh, and then he walks back out and goes, action. So I had literally about 30 seconds, if not less, to come up with a porn plot, which weirdly I found very easy. <laughs> Dogs, all kinds of funny stuff, but all that was improvised. And then Bill, who didn't expect it, is if you watch it, you can actually see him yeah. going, What? <laughs> and he's such a good actor, he just starts with the back, and from there it's just with wild. Uh, I was just going to say, the first night I worked with him, and I just met him briefly in the costumes and you know, that kind of stuff, was with this guy. And uh, he's about to stomp my head. And so uh, it was in the middle of the night. I barely knew anybody. And, I, and uh, I, I go up there. And right before I go on, I go, hey, do you mind if I riff a little? And he, I could just see his eyes just like go dead. Like, this is going to be the longest night ever. This guy's going to ruin my film. And, gonna, and he goes, just stay in my lines first. And don't worry about it. And, and maybe you can do some more. So I said his lines. And this guy was like, he was like talking to a brick wall. <laughs> he was going to kill me. And then I just started riffing. And uh, they go caught and they start laughing. He goes, okay, you could do some more. And a lot of it ended up in the, in the script, you know. It was like, yeah. it, it hit the bridge door at the dirty yes. movie. You know? <laughs> like, like, I was just throwing everything at him because I used to be a doorman. And it was just like the stupidest, you know, and he, I sent a jag out to the emergency, whatever it was, and I, I was just delivering it to this guy who was going to kill me, and I just thought it was even funnier, because it, you, I knew how I was going to die, so I just wanted to go out, like, swinging, and then, of course, you know, it, it was funny, because uh, the stunt coordinator said, uh, you, you don't mind doing a fall, or and I'm like, what do you mean, and he goes, well, he's going to body slam you on the ground, I go, yeah, I don't, I don't think so, man, <laughs> on the gravel. <laughs> on the gravel. So they brought in a guy, like, like and, and, no, he yeah. do it. and he's just looking at me like, oh, another actor wussy. Like, and sure enough, I mean, this guy lifts this guy up. They go, act, you know, cut on my neck. They put the other guy in, and I think they only did one take. Yeah, and well, he, he, he lifted said really up. choke slam. So I choked. I used to wrestle. <laughs> That's what I used to do. <laughs> the, guy, the guy was just like, you could see the stars were on his head. And he just, like, and he just like walked out. We never saw him again. But I anyway. asked if he was sure that he wanted to take it. <laughs> Anyway, it was a fun night, memorable, but that kind of like, that's Rob, you know, like if he sees things rolling and, and, and working out, then let it go. So it was fun. And Tyler, did Rob ever mention to you why he wanted to take Michael in more of a monster type form? Because prior to that, it was, you know, we knew it was a guy, but you, your performance was just over the top monster ass. Did you know, well, to, well, to begin with, I'm 6'7", right? Mm -hmm. And all the other Michaels are like, Five two, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it, it, no, he, he he wanted to tell the backstory. He wanted to have it be more aggressive than the original ones, and and or anything that had gone before it, and uh, wanted to kind of stand out on its own, you know. And, and I think it did very well. Mm -hmm. I got to interview Scout and Danielle uh, several times, and they were talking about the scenes that they filmed with you and how you guys would just talk about it and just go for it. And talk about a little bit about that. Were there times where you thought maybe you were going a little bit too far with them? Because they said they, they wanted you to go further. They just wanted to make it 
It's <laughs> hard to see it as possible, so I yeah. want to get your side of that. Did they do the podcast with you? <laughs> no. Yeah. no. No, there was no Come sex on, in that right. conversation. Okay, <laughs> good. good. <laughs> no, they're both spitfires, you know? Like Danielle doing the, we did uh, her death scene like into the, the bathroom and everything, but before that we trashed the bedroom. And she is so quick. Robert yell action, and she'd be out that door so fast. So, I mean, I had to time it. So as soon as he's getting ready to say action, I'm already grabbing for her to catch her and stop her, you know? They're both quick. I'm like, you guys realize Michael Myers is supposed to just walk, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's kind of half the reason why my Michael Myers has to move a little bit quicker is just trying to catch those two. <laughs> <laughs> so Richard, um, 31 uh, Doom had the beginning of monologue. You barely blank. Was that intentional, or is that something that you guys wanted to do? That was just me thinking, what's the next fucking line? <laughs> <laughs> that was no, it was not intentional. It was weird. They noticed it first. He yeah. wanted to point it out to me. I was like, oh, no shit, I don't. Um, <laughs> no, I just spent uh, like weeks driving around L.A. while we were filming on the scenes doing that monologue in the car over and over again. People were looking over like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> um, and then we went in and just shot three takes. Everyone, you know, I, I did remember the lines, luckily. Um, and I didn't want to let Rob down. I mean, because it was such an incredibly well-written part and I was so honored that he'd asked me to do it. I think a lot of it too was like, I want to fuck this up for Rob. <laughs> so um, just we did three and then whichever one Rob liked. You know, I, was, I figured he would put it in, and it worked out. You both were in 31, a uh, very brutal film, very unforgiving film. When you're making films like that, do you ever sit back and find yourself saying, this is really hard to do, or do you just accept it as art and <laughs> take it that way? I don't know. No. <laughs> no, the more fucking nuts it is, the easier it is to do. Um, no, I've never had luck people are like, in fact, somebody on that film was really like, oh, I don't know, it's just, you know, I feel bad about it. And I was like, really? I don't understand that. But I can, you know, I get it. But I don't. I think, I, I don't know, I don't. Especially at Three from Hell, I thought was worse than 31 in some ways in terms of just its, like, sheer gruesomeness. But um, I've never had any issue with it. <laughs> I must be fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm not the one that ever gets to kill anybody. I'm the one that these two guys kill repeatedly. Who's <laughs> <laughs> better at killing you? Well, uh, I think his head stomp is pretty good, but it, it, even with Richard, we joke about it. But we didn't know each other that well. And, um, and I kept, so I was supposed to die with the chainsaw. So every morning, Rob would go, uh, you're gonna make it through the chainsaw. You, you're gonna die with this lady with chains. Oh, okay. You know, so every day I was like a little like on edge, like oh, am I dying today or not? <laughs> and uh, you know, and then I, the chains would come and eat you. Would be crazy. And they, okay, you're gonna make it through that. So by the time it came to him, I was landing on cement. I was up all night. I was limping. I was like, you know, so I was beaten up anyway. But then um, he, they do a rehearsal. And he trots across the bridge, you know, what we're going to do. And then he walks back, and I go, hey, Rob, is, is he really going to run like a dancer in this thing? <laughs> and you just see, see this guy. He, he just got so cold. It was so mad. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so when he starts stabbing me with these retractable switchblades, he's like really hitting me hard, where I was just covered with welts all over my stomach for like stirring it up in him. But, you know, I think it was effective. <laughs> <laughs> but when he does walk away, I still grab his ankle, if you notice in the film. I'm still just trying to hang on to him, just to, just to rub him wrong, though, and he kicked me one more time. So, yeah, we are all friends, I guess. <laughs> I guess. So, Jeff, you played the Warden Men 3 from Hell, and I could be wrong, but 
I got a little Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Just, was that any ever cross your mind? Maybe more Powers Booth, I think. Okay. I okay. Powers Booth. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so, Tyler, you mentioned wrestling. Yeah. WCW? Yeah. And you worked with... Um, I, wrestled, I wrestled for 11 and a half years all over the world. Okay. And you, you worked, I read you worked with uh, Kevin Nash before he was Diesel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were tag partners for a while. Did, did anybody ever beat you? Guys, I mean, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ric Flair did quite a bit. You know? <laughs> he had the book at the time. You know? uh, so he was, he's booking the matches, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess he will win them. Exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. It's fake, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> predetermined? Yeah, it's predetermined. It's not fake. Predetermined. Oh man. So Richard, uh, you got to enter the Star Wars universe. Talk about that because when that episode aired, there were so many people talking about you that I forgot the Mandalorian was even in the episode. So kind of talk about being in the Star Wars universe. Um, yeah, that came out of nowhere. My um, my agent called me and uh, and he said, I thought he said. Oh, I just got you an offer for a show called The Mongolian. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck's that? I was like, what the I was like, oh, I'm the pain, not yet, so I'm not going to do it. I thought it was like a Russian thing. <laughs> and he called back a few weeks later to just confirm it was all done. He said, I said, yeah, so what's this Mongolian thing? He's like, Mongolian, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, Mandalorian. I was like, oh. and, I, and then again, I still didn't know it, actually, because I'm not you know, I haven't watched the show. And he said, Star Wars. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glad I said yes, the Mongolian. Um, so yeah, it was great. And then I went and did it, and it was, you know, it's incredible to be on a set, and there's all stormtroopers around, and you know, it's like, wow, it's fucking nuts. Uh, and Bill Burr was in it, and he's such a cool guy, and he was so good in that scene. And then we just did it. I didn't think a lot about it. Um, I knew it was a good scene, uh, and I had a lot of fun shooting it. I knew Bill was just brilliant watching him do his stuff. And then... Um, came out and people just seemed to really dig it and it was cool and I love a lot of people who know me from Rob or whatever like were watching it going fuck there's Doomhead <laughs> Star Wars what the fuck so I know it was, it was like, gives me a giggle so Jeff you were the original Geico caveman how did you how did that become uh, yeah I mean I, I did it it started a couple of decades ago and I did it for about 10 years and then, they, and then it stopped, and then we just started it up a couple months ago. Right, yeah. Yeah, so they did some stuff for the Super Bowl, and maybe some stuff coming up next month, so. Yeah, it was fun. It's very cool. And it's and done by, on the makeup's done by this guy, Tony Gardner, who's a special effects guy who started, uh, like, I think he was a film student. He was in Thriller. Like, he's one of the guys, he worked with Rick Baker, and then he... He put the alien coming out of the alien stomach, and he does the Chucky dolls, and he does. And he's a pretty amazing genius guy, and so it's been fun to learn about that world through him. Right. But yeah, it's it's a crazy thing to put that stuff on, and it's about three hours of makeup, depending on how much hair they have to put on my body. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's it's crazy. To, it's like just putting on an old suit or something, you know, and jumping back in. But they're all over the internet now. I don't know. We did a bunch of stuff that keeps coming out. Did you have any writing behind it, or were you just sort of the performer? Well, I mean, I improvise a lot. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's kind of my thing. When, when it comes to commercials, uh, for actors in general, it's just hard to make a living, and um, especially if you're a character guy. So uh, throughout the years, I always was booking commercials and then I'd go off and do a play or do a short film or whatever I do. So I probably did a hundred commercials without the Geico and sold everything from whatever you want, like fast food to soda to beer to cars, whatever. I'm, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. Very cool. Yeah. So Tyler, you uh, ended up playing Rufus in uh, Devil's Rejects. How, yeah. did, how did you end up getting that role? Well, I, I went in an audition for, I believe it was Dallas Page's role and didn't get it, didn't hear back, but I guess Rob had the plan to 
replace the original Rufus, and uh, I got the call saying that I was going to do that. I went on there for four four days shooting the opening, and then after that, a couple of years later, Rob called and said, "Hey, I want you to be Michael Myers." Mm -hmm. So I guess it worked out pretty good. You know? And you were going to do that other role too. What was the other movie that you guys were like? Oh. Which look really cool if you ever look online. It's T Rex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The boxing one. Yeah. I was training for over a year for that thing. Yeah. 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 So you guys have all been in a Rob film that has a fan following and love Halloween and the monsters. As actors, do you find any extra added pressure when you're taking on a role like that to, to really do it justice? I went in with it into the uh, shooting the first Halloween just wanting to bring my own thing to it you know of course I watched all the other stuff but uh, we ended up doing such a good job that we held the box office record for 14 years wow. you know Labor Day box office record Rob held for 14 years with his first Halloween yeah so I think we did something right <laughs> I was just going to say that the monsters was something that came up almost seven or eight years ago he told me about and then it would go away so in the in the beginning I was like overly anxious and nervous and I pulled the car over he goes hey uh, I was thinking of you doing a, and I was like what and I'm like mm. and so every once in a while it would come up again hey I'm thinking about and then after watching all the shows, and it was almost like I didn't even ever, ever think it was gonna happen. So by the time it happened, and I did all my research and learning, I was still nervous about it, and yeah, and, and I'm, not a, I'm not a mimic, I'm not, you know, I don't do a great imitation necessarily, I just wanted to capture some mannerisms, because he is so beloved, and we just wanted to do something in the same spirit, so. Um, yeah, we, we tried to honor the show in the same kind of, you know, goofy, fun humor. And I, I think we did it, and there's a lot of fans of it, and then a lot of people came out before it even came out uh, against it. So, you know, that's the internet. Right. Yeah, sure is. <clears throat> Richard, talk about the makeup that you went through to play Orlock. Orlock? Yeah, that was easy compared to the night game. Uh, Orlock was like uh, two hours, three hours. Um, and I only had to do it a couple of times. And so it was fun. It was, you know, I love that kind of character that Rob wrote. He said to me, do you want to, hey, would you mind doing another character? I'm like, fuck no, you have to do as many as you want. I mean, <laughs> I'm having a great time. He's like, well, he's a vampire. And, you know, he goes on a blind date with, you know, uh, Lily. I was like, fuck, that's great. So we, that was a fun night. But, um, the two of us, you know, all of us laughed a lot with, you know, fucking doodles coming out and whatever the fuck it was, rats and shit. But, you know, Rob's great like that. It was it was a lot of fun doing a comedy with Rob. Um, you know, after all the, the other extreme end of the spectrum, uh, to sit around making a comedy together was a, it was just a lot of fun. And, you know, I have to say, um, you know, what Jeff did, because, you know, go back to the other question, you know, I had no pressure because my characters didn't exist in the, in the original. And, uh, you know, watching Jeff go through everything he did to do that every day for, you know, weeks on end was extraordinary. And then to see the performance, because obviously I watched him doing it, but when I actually watched the film, it was, you know, it was incredible because he had just gotten a bit of, um, uh, you know, a bit of the old Herman, but also brought this new, and it was just the right blend. I thought it was an amazing performance. I don't think I've already even told about it. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard. Yeah, you gotta say it's all right. It was really, it was really incredible. Yeah, it keeps me humble. Is <laughs> and so, Richard, when you're watching something else, what makes a good villain for you? Since you play such a good one, uh, what makes a good villain? Yeah, yeah, it's hard. I see sometimes, you know, some of the. I don't. I think for me, it's when they're still. There's a stillness behind it. Um, you know, I watch performances sometimes, and you think, oh, you know, I could see how that guy could have gone, you know, with the performance, like, yeah, I'm a fucking mad man, I'm gonna kill you, you know? And then you think, oh, if only he had just kind of just been stiller, and just kind of, because, you know, mad people are usually actually terrifying because they're just fucking still. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I see that a lot, and then other times I watch the performances, and, 
And I remember the first time I saw, and it's weird, not a horror film, but it's like Schindler's List. I mean, I mean, it's him, but they're, you know, what's in Ray Fiennes, but it's the Nazi guy. And you watch it, it's fucking terrifying because he's so still. And I, that never really struck me when I was, what, 20, 30, 30 years ago. But, you know, so, yeah, I love seeing people not do what you think they'll do. You know, or maybe you think they should be still and they're kind of still. You know, I love that. When you don't expect, when you see something you don't expect. Speaking of the comedy aspect of the monsters, do you guys think it's harder to make people laugh or to scare them? Could you say that again? <laughs> As actors, do you think no, I was just kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Proving the <one. laughs> uh, I, You know, it just depends. It depends on what the, the project is. I don't know. They're all different. It's it's hard. It's hard to just generalize. I think it depends on how well written things are and yeah. how well directed. Like you know, the monsters. Because I was like, fuck, I have, you know, I've done like a shitload of comedy, really. Um, and you really had that funny. Kind of <laughs> I am on fucking funny. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Rob's like comedy. So I was anxious about it, but you know, it was so well written, and the, you know, the way we did it, and the kind of level the rock because he kept saying to me it's like bigger you know oh, we were rehearsing it a bit and he was like no I think it's you know so it was like fuck it I'm just gonna go for it especially with Dr. Wolfgang just I can know you know and and then when I watched it I was like Rob was so right you know the more it's kind of big you know it really works so a lot of it depends on on the writing the same with art it just depends on the writing and the, and the director obviously a lot and one other note, and because we were doing it in Budapest, it was like in the in the deep, deep part of the um, pandemic. They had uh, the the streets were shut down uh, at night after seven. All the restaurants were closed. They had a curfew. On the set, everybody who had masks and shields. They barely spoke English. So here I'm trying to do the comedy. And usually you get like I'm in commercials and stuff. You can look at the cameraman. You can look at somebody if they smile out, you know, in between takes. And it was just like aliens just staring at me. <laughs> it was crickets. Every I did anything if I did anything. And then I would see Rob behind the monitor in the distance and just like kind of like he, he's not even a big laugher by any means. But you just see him smiling, like oh thank God he's smiling. And then I'd be sweating and I'd be doing some you know pratfall or whatever it was going on. It, it was a little nerve-wracking, you know. You never, I, I couldn't gauge it, and 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 it was it was a really touching thing because I worked with these people for three months, and it was only till the end of the shoot because the city was shut down. It was crazy. Um, they did a, uh, a drone came down and they did a whole cast and crew picture, and I ran out of makeup, and I went and we were in front of a castle, and the drone came down to take a picture. And I'm standing there, and then I turned around, and then everybody took off their masks and shield for three months. I didn't know what anybody looked like. <laughs> and, and, it, and people were so happy and stuff. I was like, oh, thank God, people like this, or they enjoyed this. And it was, it was really touching. I remember Sherry was crying. Like, like it was so, it's such a strange pressure to be put on in, in that atmosphere. But anyway, sorry for bringing everybody down. <laughs> So one last question for me before we take it to the audience. Richard, you, you, you mentioned the, the Night King. Talk about how you got involved in that and some of the makeup. Uh, just my agent called me again, a different one, but they called and said, uh, I had auditioned for Game of Thrones a few times and didn't get it small. They weren't actually very good parts. And then... Uh, no, it wasn't well, a small part because it was Peter Dinklage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just hey, 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 I apologize. <laughs> And then they called and they were like, uh, well, they want to see you again, but the character's only in it for about 30 seconds. He doesn't speak to your company prosthetics. And I was like, fuck, and hell, this is where my career's gone to. Um, so I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. He said, but he's supposed to be important going down the road. So I went and they made me touch a baby, pretend to touch a baby or something. And I got the part. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need a creep. Can you touch the baby? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? You're going to pretend it's a baby and you're touching it. Like, All right. 
target all of a career or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that was an easy role for me. And then, um, and then it was, turned out to be the night game. I was like, fuck, okay. I guess I'm glad I showed up uh, for the audition. So that's how that happened. And then, yeah, it was a, you know, it was a hard because it took eight hours to do the makeup on and off. And then 10 hour shoot days, so like 18 hours a day. So it was um, brutal, actually, but it was um, obviously worth it because it was a great show. People, people love it. All right, who has a question for some of these guys? Anybody? I know. Sure. Yeah, before you guys started um, working with Rob Zombie, were you, any of you, fans of his music? And are you now? <laughs> I, I, I knew Sonny White Zombie more, and I knew him a bit, and then, um, uh, but not a lot, and uh, and I heard of his films, I, his, I, I got Halloween 2, it's when I first started working well, so I went back and I, I watched the earlier films, and uh, and also uh, him in concert videos and stuff, so I was like, oh, fuck, what have I got into, thinking he's just going to be this fucking maniac, right? Especially when well, you know, see him in concert, holy shit. So when I got to Atlanta to shoot uh, our scene, um, all of a sudden he comes by my trailer and he you know, introduces himself, because you don't meet him in audition or anything. Uh, and then uh, he, uh, we're, we're talking about vegan cheese, because I'm a vegetarian, and I don't, well, I, I love cheese, and he's a vegan, and he's telling me, oh, you should try it. And I'm thinking, what cheese fuck? This crazy fucking guy is actually this sweet, chilled out dude talking about vegan cheese with me. <laughs> this is great. I love this guy. So yeah, no, he's you know I love Rob. He can create that amazing image of him how he is on stage and he appears to be this maniac. Yeah, he's actually an incredibly thoughtful, creative, very chilled out human being. But go see his concerts. He's great. Oh, he's yeah, so amazing. much fun to watch. He's mm -hmm. just like the. Tasmanian yeah, devil up there, man. Right. He's so he's so much fun. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Anybody else? Sure. So obviously you guys have worked with Rob Zombie on like a lot of different films and um, they're all loved by so many people in different ways. Which uh, film for each of you is like maybe the most satisfying or the most gratifying to see? What's your favorite project you've worked on? Wow. Uh, for me it's a toss up between Halloween one and Halloween two. You know, was, at the end of Halloween 2, we all became just a family, you know, and it was just an amazing time. Yeah. Other than the Weinsteins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're like all of our children, so it's... <laughs> we, we can't pick one of them. Yeah. It is true though. It is like no, you really like had children. You, know, you had a good time on each yeah. one, or something was you know yeah. unique, or this one was challenging. This one, you know. it's really true. It's really hard. They were all incredible experiences. And, yeah, and I, I loved how I got killed in this one, and then the other one I loved how I like I got killed again. <laughs> <laughs> I got killed, and then I got brought back to life by this guy yeah. on the last one. So there you go. Well, hopefully one day we see you as the killer instead of the killer. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope. <laughs> All right, everybody, give a round of applause for Patrick. Come to our table. We have more stories. <laughs>